Three years ago, around this time in 2018, I started um, writing indie game reviews and I realized that it was something I was really passionate about, not only video games, but talking about them. And it's just these games can show us things that we think are fun or that we think are interesting, but they can make us explore those parts of ourselves that I don't think you can necessarily get from other mediums. My name is Sophie. I am from Guadalajara, Mexico, and I've grown up here in Houston first and then Austin uh, most of my life. I run Sleepy Toadstool as a hobby, my indie review blog. Um, I call it a blog, although it's a website. Um, I review indie games on a bi-weekly basis. The reason I wanna shine a light on indie games is because they can touch on things that have not been touched on in perhaps even other mediums, and they can do it in a way that you would never imagine. It all started pretty much because of a couple reasons. My partner, he is a game developer, and I saw a game he was working on, Mythic Ocean, at the time, and I got to see that a small team, just you know, three people or even one person, can work on a game and make something really unique and really different. So that kind of got me interested in indie games and what they were. So I happened to be on Spotify and Spotify was suggesting songs to me. Um, and I stumbled upon this one song from the Rockwind soundtrack. It was so beautiful and I was so blown away that I had to play this game. The music was absolutely beautiful. The art was really cute and the story was absolutely emotional and heartbreaking. So I just fell in love with it and it became one of my favorite games. So I decided to write a review about it because I wanted others to know how much I liked it and how good it was. Um, so that's when I decided I would start playing other games like that and I would write reviews about them. It definitely feels like work sometimes um, and I do have to make time for it, but I always pick games I like. I mean, I have the advantage that I'm not a paid reviewer. I don't get assigned games by anyone. I assign them to myself, so I'm gonna pick a game I think I'll like. I have this need to always complete games. I, I'm not a completionist by any means, and you know, I have to get every single thing, but I do wanna finish the game. I really like seeing the credits roll, so um, that kind of drives me to finish it, and if I ever feel like I'm not gonna be happy playing it and I just don't wanna finish it, I won't make myself because maybe I can give a good enough review without doing that. I've actually done that once where I did not finish a game because it wasn't good, and I still wrote a review because that was my assessment of it. It's funny how there's such a, you know, oh, girls don't play games, you know, games are for boys, stigma. It's, it's funny how that's, that's a thought because if you go all the way back to like when games were first being made, that wasn't a thing at all until marketing decided to make this really edgy, like boy-centered marketing campaign for games. Like they were so targeted towards boys to play video games. So I think the, the problem is for some reason, I guess people who have, certain men who have played games their whole life feel like they have to own this in the way they feel like they have to own a lot of other properties. But it's, it's you know, games are so fun and they're such, they're an artistic medium. So it should be for everyone to enjoy, for kids to enjoy, for adults to enjoy, for women, men, everybody. So I think we need to more proudly like embrace the games that we're into and if they're called casual games, that's fine. And I think the indie game scene has helped that because we see these little tiny sort of wholesome sort of shorter games and those are real games and people really enjoy them. And I think there's definitely a space for everybody in that space. What I want people to take away from my reviews, um, I guess one, let me speak first to people who already play video games. I would say that there's so much more out there and you might discover that a game that was made by one person is absolutely incredible and touches you in a way that like nothing else has. It's a piece of media that feels personal and it hasn't been really touched by an industry in a way. So I recommend if you play games but you don't play indie games, um, you know, look at 
what indie games are out there. Maybe start by looking at my reviews and see what you might like. For people who don't play games, indie games are a really great way to start. I mean, for you, games might seem too scary or hard or violent or something. And this is a really good place to start because indie games tend to be uh, made a little bit more um, passionately, I guess. And you can find games that perhaps are more welcoming, more accessible, more warm. So I'd say, you know, if you don't think what you've seen out there of video games from the industry isn't for you, then maybe indie games are for you. So I would just say, you know, find your community and find people who share that passion because they're definitely out there.